Hello everyone, I'm Jose Sanchez from SPL. I work as a technical advisor for the TOL Consortium. In this video, I want to show you some tools to ease your talk development. As you know, the TOL 2 API was defined using the OpenAPI 3 specification. But first of all, let me give you a brief introduction to what OpenAPI 3.0 is. OAS 3.0, formerly Swagger 2.0 specification, is an API description format for RESTful APIs. It is meant to provide a standard format to unify how an industry defines and describes the entire API, including the endpoints, operations on each endpoint, and the data model used. It is a community-driven project supported by the OpenAPI Initiative, which is a Linux Foundations project, with members such as Google, PayPal, Microsoft, IBM, Atlassian, Oracle, SAP, and SmartBear Software, the owner of Swagger. In talk, the whole protocol is described using OAS 3.0 format through three different files. A data model OAS file, where you can find all the talk objects defined such as the device, function, calendar, control program, group, etc. And two OAS files for describing the gateway and CMS APIs. In these files, all the endpoints and operation of the talk RESTful APIs are described. So for instance, you will find all the typical RESTful operations requests, the get, post, delete, that can be sent to the slash devices endpoint of a gateway or CMS server. One of the main advantages of OAS 3.0 is the availability of tools for different purposes, such as editing an API, documenting or creating code automatically. I'm going to focus on code and documentation generation, which can shorten the top two implementation dramatically. As I said, there are plenty of tools for OAS 3, but for this presentation, I'm going to do the demo with OpenAPI Generator. OpenAPI Generator is a fork of Swagger CodeGen. It is community-driven and it seems that it's addressing some of the issues the previous version of Swagger CodeGen had. OpenAPI Generator supports a large set of languages and it can be used for generating API clients, creating server stops, to generate documentation in different formats such as HTML or Markdown, compose a configuration files, or even create a MySQL schema definition. This OpenAPI generator is a kind of Swiss knife, and it supports many languages for generating code, so please check the GitHub repository to find yours. Now is demo time. To see a brief view of what OpenAPI generator can give us, and after installing it, I will generate documentation for one of the talk API and we'll see how it looks like. Then I will create a MySQL schema and we'll briefly review the generated SQL. But for the central part of the demo, we will generate a server stuff for the talk API with Spring. We will test that the server works and we will modify the source code so that we can see the differences. And finally, I will generate a client SDK so that it can be used in your implementation. Now, let's move to VS Code. For your convenience, I will do this demo part with VS Code so that we can see the generated code and the terminal output as I write comments. If you are not familiar with VS Code, just pay attention on the left panel where you will find the file explorer, then the Celtran window where we'll see the file's content, and on the bottom you will find the terminal output. This tool is much more complex, but for the demo's purpose, I think it is enough clarification. So, first of all, let's open its GitHub page. I strongly recommend you to read the OpenAPI generator's documentation on the GitHub repository. There, you will find different ways of using it and what you can achieve. As you can see, it is a big project forked from the Swagger CodeGen, so you will find a lot of reference to it. 
OpenAPI generator can be installed or used in different ways so that you can use it in your development system as you wish. In my case, I will just download the jar file so that I can use it easily. So first of all, I'm going to download the stable version of the tool to be used as a terminal command. Let me copy and paste the VJ URL from the GitHub repository. And now that we have the jar file download, we can see which commands are available by executing the jar with java-jar and the name of the file. And now, let's be sure we are using the last stable version by running the tool asking the version. Now, let's see what the tool offers just by writing other command. As you can see, there are many languages supported. They are grouped as client, servers, documentation, schemas, and config generators. Some of them are more mature than others. I would be surprised if your language is not represented here, but you can even create your own templates, so check the documentation to know how to do it. Before starting generating stuff, let me confess that in order to avoid some issues I found in this tool, and that were, by the way, also present in Swagger Code Gen, I've modified slightly the talk OAS files, removing the enum attributes for the schemas related to polymorphic relationships. Although the talk OAS files follow the OpenAPI standard, it seems that these tools are not following the standard 100%. I found that they are working on a solution, so we hopefully will have it soon. So, the first step, once we have installed the tool, is to generate HTML documentation for our CMS API. For that, we are going to work with the generate command, so we will need, let me write it, an input file, a generator template, an output directory to where the generated file will go, and here we go. Now let's open the generated document to see how it looks like. Okay. As you can see, we can read the OpenAPI file in a friendly way. It shows also some SDK examples with different languages such as Java, Android, Objective-C, JavaScript, C Sharp, PHP, Python. As you can imagine, the present examples are based on the code that can be generated also by the tool. Let's try with the other HTML option, which is HTML instead of HTML2. So again, let me modify the command. Okay, and the output folder. Okay, done. We open the file. And as you can see, this option shows information in a different way. Showing also info about the schemas, by the way. You can try the, the other options. Let's continue with our generations. Now, we probably would need a MySQL schema in order to create our database. So let's generate it. Again, let me modify. And in, in this case, I'm going to work with the data model file. Because I don't, I don't care about the API. I, I only need the data model to generate the MySQL schema. So let me change the input file, and the template, and the output directory. Okay, it's done. Now let's open the schema. As you can see, all the SQL command for creating the tables required for our project are defined here. So it is certainly a time saving. Okay, now that we have generated documentation and a database schema, let's continue with the source code, which is the central part of this demo. 
I will show you how to generate the source code for Spring, which is very, very common in, in Java. I will build the project and test it. Then we will check the documentation and the server stuff created, and why not, we will modify the code and build again to see the changes. So let's go. Again, let me change the input file, the template, I will use Spring, and the output directory. As with the other generators, a new directory is created, so let's go inside and build the project with Maven. Okay, it seems that Maven has finished without problem, so let's try it. As you can see at the readme file, the server is listening on port 8080, so let's browse it and see how it looks like. Okay, you can see it has a Swagger interface, which let us browse the API. If as ever we go to slash devices, we can see the different existing operations. So let's try get devices operation and see how it presents the information. Nice. We can see the different operations over the device results. It shows us also the verb used post that put patch, delete and get. And if we click on one of them, let's say get devices, we can see the description of this operation also. We can read the description the parameters required and the different responses descriptions for each response code. So we can click on the model for the response and see what is expected for this model, the definition of each attribute and so on. But let's try the server that has been created behind. At the right corner of the operation description, we find the try it out button. If we click the button, we see the form to be filled before to send a request. So let's put an API version 2.3.0 and a client address, even a false one. We click execute and we have a response. Let's try the same request from the terminal. Great, it's answering. So there is a server behind. Okay, and now let's modify our server in order to give a different response. So we dive into the generated code for Spring, uh, Spring Boot, by the way, finding the device API.java, which includes the code sending the response. Here it is. Let's modify it in order to send a given function, let's say fbasic. Save. We compile again the Maven project and we start. Easy. Let's try again. Done. So there is code behind and it's working. You would need only to, to grab this code and, and put it in your project. And last. Let's generate a Java client SDK for a given library, but this time with a selected library, for instance, Jersey 2. So again, let's use again the data model as an input file, and then the Java template. But this time we are going to add a library with dash dash library, Jersey 2, and an output directory for the client. Okay, it's done. So we could graph these files and use them in our project. And with this last generated code, we finish the demo and the video. Thanks for watching.